Hey there, all you world history buffs out there. Mr. Yarber's back to give you a quick rundown on the American Revolution. First, let's talk about some of the backgrounds. So check out this jacket, man. Woo, got on my military jacket. First off, okay, let's talk about this. The American Revolution kind of stems from this thing we like to know as the French and Indian War. During the French and Indian War, Great Britain supported the colonists in order to help them defeat the, the Native Americans and also uh, the French. Now because of that, this series of events left Great Britain in a massive amount of debt. Now before, before the French-Indian War, uh, what takes place is uh, basically Great Britain's only tax and imports coming into the colonies. But now they kind of have to revamp themselves because they're broke. They just spent a lot of money on war. So this changed between 1763 and 1776. They implemented things like the Stamp Act, um, you know, the, the Tea Act, all these things, basically placing taxes on internal affair, affairs inside the colonies. Now, the, the bad thing about this money is the money was leaving the colonies going over to England, so the money wasn't necessarily being used in the colonies. Well, this upset people. They're paying money, and at the same time, they have no representation, no say in Parliament in these taxes and whatever taxes that are actually being placed on. They have no say in it. So the people become upset. They start to boycott, they start to protest. You have things like the Boston Massacre that takes place where five people are killed, six more is injured. Uh, you have the Boston Tea Party where those Sons of Liberty guys, they, they, they dress themselves up, they go out, they dump all the tea in the Boston Harbor. Well, because of that, you know, uh, Great Britain, they send over a lot of these um, more soldiers, red coats, they come over, they kind of become the police. Um, you've got a bunch of different things that takes place, including the suspension of the colonial government. Now, at the same time, the First Continental Congress comes together and they send a letter over to the king asking the king, you know, will you please stop? Just, just please stop. We're getting upset. Um, the king doesn't ever respond to it. They don't know if he ever read it. Anyways, after the, 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 the colonial government suspended, you know, um, the Declaration of Independence is drafted on July 4th, 1776. Now, it's not officially signed until, I believe, it's August 2nd, 1776. That's whenever the Declaration of Independence is signed. But this is a persuasive essay, a persuasive letter. The reason it has to be persuasive is it doesn't really matter if the king or, you know, whoever agrees with it over there. But the problem is, is in order for the colonies to come together, they have to have the support of the people. So not only did the Declaration of Independence say that, hey, we're going to be our free country, they provided reasons why. Because remember, in the colonies, you still had loyalists. And those people were loyal to Great Britain, so they had to persuade those people to come and join their side. Now, the American Revolution starts. It's a great battle. Um, you know, you got the colonists. The French do come in and support the colonists and, and helping us actually win our freedom from Great Britain. It ends in 1781. Uh, the American Revolution ends. We are a free nation. Now, the first government that we create right after, and remember, all this is based on principles of enlightenment characters, John Locke, Baron de Montesquieu, all those characters we just got done learning about. Is, our government's based on those guys. They formed a, a government, they called it the Articles of Confederation. Now, the Articles of Confederation was a weak government, which would later on be transitioned into a, a new type of government, which is what we see in today's time. That's your quick rundown on the American Revolution. I hope you have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.